It is often said that government is transient and its beauty lies in how those who take over succeed and exceed expectations. Hello and welcome to Nasara Focus. I am TJ Su Adewi. On the show today, we take a look at how Governor Abdullah Isule is delivering the present and securing the future for the people of Nasara State. Welcome to the program. Upon becoming the governor of Nasarawa State, Governor Abdullah Sule made it a point of duty to create an inclusive government that benefits all. The Solid Mineral State has now joined 11 other states in the country to launch its state action plan on domestication of the United Nations Security Council Resolution 1325 on women peace and security. I am particularly delighted that our amiable governor, the governor of Nostrava State, His Excellency Engineer Abdullahi A. Sine, is here personally to perform this event. Evidently, this is a further demonstration of Your Excellency's concern for the welfare and well-being of women in Nostrava State. And other and another example of the distinctive characteristic of your administration to exceed all expectation in the delivery of service to the people of Nostrava State. Launching the SAP document in Lafia, the state governor, Engineer Abdullah Isuli, stressed the significance of the event, considering the commitment of his administration towards inclusion of women in the security architecture of the state. This imperative is that the United States has to be able 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 to While noting that security is a bedrock of harmonious coexistence and social economic development of the society, the governor emphasized the determination of his administration to continue to promote and sustain peace in the state through the inclusion of women in not only the security architecture, but also in governance. Today's occasion is significant considering our commitment to the inclusion of women in the security architecture of the state to ensure the entrenchment of peace and harmonious coexistence among the diverse ethnic nationalities in the South. Engineer Sule lamented that despite government's effort to carry women along, they have largely remained marginalized and denied access to opportunities that contribute their quota in decision making. The governor pointed out that during armed conflicts, women and children have become the most vulnerable to experience untold hardship. Security in Nasarawa State received a boost recently when the governor flagged off the Special Forces headquarters in Doma. The competition for scarce land between the farmers and the herders in the zone has made it vulnerable to many security challenges ranging from communal clashes, clashes between herdsmen and farmers, kidnapping, banditry, cattle rustling, among other socio-economic challenges in the zone. This development is an indication that Nasara State and indeed the North Central will soon join the League of States that experience peace and security in Nigeria. I have suffered sexual violence. I in recent months, the outcry against rape and gender-based violence have grown louder across the country, with civil society groups demanding justice for victims, prosecution of perpetrators, and laws that ensure safety for women everywhere. <coughs> At this occasion, 
Governor Abdullahi Sule used the opportunity to condemn the recent spate of rape in the country, particularly the recent incident that occurred in Adogi, Lafia East Development Area, where an infant was raped, leaving the child and parents in agony and trauma. He warned that the government will not take it lightly with suspected rapists, as such persons will be made to face the full wrath of the law. In a goodwill message, Country Director, Action Aid Nigeria, Ene Obi, showed appreciation to the state governor for opening the space for the launch of the SAP document to take place. Records shows that there is a worrisome increase in sexual violence and, and uh, uh, violence against women and girls since the pandemic began. And uh, the lockdown also created more problems and we have more increase in the cases of violence against women and girls. Many of them have been abused in their homes and also in their communities. In a strong partnership with Global Peace Development and Beacon Youth Initiative, actually Nigeria through its systems and structure a strengthening approach against radicalization to violent extremism, the project which is funded by GISA, Action Aid is, you know, is sensitizing and building the capacity of women and girls from different communities and for them to be able to demand for their rights and also looking at safe spaces and willing to, we are willing to continue to work with the state government to ensure that every woman, every girl in Nasarawa state is liberated from the influence and effect of violent extremism and, incre and increase you know, sustainable development. Ene Obi disclosed that her organization is willing to partner with the state government towards ensuring that every woman in Nasarawa state is liberated from the influence and effect of violent extremism and increase sustainable development. To empower women in the state, trainings, workshops and capacity building programs have been organized for women in the last one year of the Abdullahi Suli administration. This time, the governor through the Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Development is empowering 150 women from the 13 local government areas of the state on entrepreneurial management and skill acquisition to make them self-reliant. After the training, the people that have come down here to Nasarawa from Abuja to give them this training are not just ordinary people, they are people from organization that works under the CBN. And we have been able to discuss with this CPN that after this training, every trainee will have a certificate. And that certificate is what will make you assess the facility that is available on the CBN. And this facility is going to be given in phases, like 80% of the facility may come in equipment, then 20% of it will come in cash. Based on the significance he placed on information communications technology, Governor Abdullah Isuli fostered a partnership with the National Information Technology Development Agency to train and build the capacity of hundreds of women in the state. For a lady that is selling palm oil by the roadside, if you take this training seriously, because they are going to give you one, the tool that you require, that is the laptop. They are also going to give you the internet to support what you are doing. They are going to provide you with the software that you need. And then, of course, what the politicians understand, stipend, that goes along with it. So, <laughs> look like there are more politicians than there are trainees for ICT. <laughs> so, if that is the case, then you have everything you need to train those three people. And what you will be able to be making from this business will be more than what the, that lady that is selling palm oil on the street will be making. That is your own interpretation of contribution to GDP. Because if you set up the business, people will use it. Today, like he clearly mentioned, during this process, a lot of you will become ICT knowledgeable, that you will be able to also build your own small platforms. 
you will be able to use your own handset. A lot of people use handset purely for just communication. Today he's telling you the simple handset that you have, that somebody will go and buy 200,000 Naira iPhone, and you will be using it only for telephone calls and, and text messages. That is a total waste. Because that is a powerful tool that you can use for a lot of things. It would be recalled that the United Nations Security Council Resolution 1325 came into being on the 31st of October 2000, recognizing the impact of armed conflict on women and girls. The resolution increased the participation of women and incorporates gender perspectives in all UN peace and security efforts. Nasarawa State has been rated among the most progressive states in Nigeria's north central region since the emergence of the Abdullah Isuli administration. Recently, the governor launched a two day workshop for the community based targeting team from the seven remaining LGAs in Nasarawa State under the National Social Safety Nets program. Organizers say the essence of the program is to fish out the most vulnerable and the poorest of the poor in the society. And one of the platforms in achieving the success of the exercise was through the cash transfer program. The National Social Safety Net program was launched by the federal government in the year 2017 and it is aimed at establishing a single social register for the poor and the most vulnerable households in Nasarawa State. The training of the participants is to enable government to register and enroll the poor and the vulnerable households into the National Social Safety Register, which will be used for the facilitation of the conditional cash transfer of the social investment program of the federal government, as was clearly indicated by the coordinator during his presentation. You will recall that Nasarawa State domesticated the Social Investment Program, SIP, with a view to addressing unemployment and improving the living conditions of the poorest citizens as a means of tackling the pervasive poverty prevalence in Nasarawa State. Governor Abdullah Isule believes that if properly harnessed, the exercise will go a long way in underscoring the importance of the social intervention program in eradicating poverty in line with the policy thrust of his administration. Household has been identified by the pilot local government area and over 42,000 people have been mined from that register that are currently benefiting the conditional cash transfer program. It's yielding a lot to the uh, uh, most poor and the most vulnerable people. We have the cash transfer program going on in the six local governments, which we have over 48,000 beneficiaries right now. And uh, we have uh, additional approval of over 50,000 beneficiaries in those six local governments, which we are about implementing. We're hoping to implement the remaining, uh, this new 50,000 before the end of the year. The program was initially piloted in six local government areas of Awe, Akwanga, Kokona, Lafia, Nasarawa, and Wamba local government areas, while the remaining seven local government areas of Doma, Obi, Kiana, Nasarawa Egon, Karu, Kefi, and Toto local government areas are to be covered in this phase. Since the beginning of the lockdown announced across the country due to the outbreak of the coronavirus, there has been an increase in the rate of crime in national states. Armed robbery, kidnapping and other heinous crimes have become the order of the day. But the police is also working around the clock to restore sanity to the state which was regarded as one of the most peaceful states in the north before the lockdown. Its efforts have now started yielding fruits with the arrest of these suspects. We are all aware when the current chairman, Nasrallah State Bishop Mason was kidnapped. We struggled as zealously. We constructed several anti-criminal templates. We entered bushes. We climbed mountains. 
we put pressure on the uh, kidnappers and eventually was released. These young men are another set of suspects allegedly responsible for the killing of the traditional ruler of Odo community, Amos Obewe. The suspects are allegedly responsible for the kidnap of the grandchildren of Osuajiwe, a first class traditional ruler in the state, and other commuters along the local Abuja road. They were arrested by the police while lavishing their money in Nasara, a town in the state. We have arrested them. They belong, they are members of dangerous kidnapping and banditry group. But with their arrest, we have been able to disconnect, to dislocate, and to mollify the aggressiveness of this criminal element. Insurgency, banditry, robbery, and kidnapping are among the many challenges confronting the Nigerian state in recent times. It has led to the death of thousands of persons and loss of properties worth millions of naira. The recent massacre in southern Kaduna, the heightened level of insecurity in Nasra state, and the continuous killings of persons in the northeast speak volumes of the current state of insecurity in the country. The, flag. the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, is aware of this and is making frantic efforts to tackle these challenges. This mobile police training college in Ende Hills of Nashua State is one of the measures put in place by the police to enhance the capacity of its men to tackle the increasing rate of insecurity in the country. I thank you all. The training school is equipped with adequate infrastructure such as dormitories natural hills, a helipad, and a clinic that would aid the learning process of the trainees. Specialized training is key to effective planning, coordination, and successful operation of the police. Especially at this time that the nation is faced with the threat of terrorism, banditry, kidnapping, and armed robbery. The Minister for Police Affairs, who is representing President Muhammad Buhari, and the national state governor at hand to inaugurate the project. They are convinced that the training school would contribute immensely in the fight against insecurity in the country. The intention is to expand the capacity of the PMF, PMF training facilities in the country to give effect to the capacity building for special forces to neutralize a rising waves of violent criminalities across the country. It is my belief and conviction that the establishment of this college will serve as an avenue for prospective participants to exchange ideas and share experience on modern trends of combating insecurity in the entire country. Indigenous of the state who grew the occasion optimistic of improved security in the state and the country at large. Previous governor, um, the immediate past governor, um, Senator Umaru Tanko Al-Makura, had a mantra called um, seeing is believing. And the current governor, Engineer Abdullahi A. Suley's mantra or motto, or what I call statement of paupers, is exceeding all expectations. So the previous government was evidence-based, you know, in the sense that they were dealing more in infrastructure. You could say it was a government of infrastructure, roads, bridges, airports, the physical evidence-based projects. Now, that became what you would call setting the threshold, a very strong foundation for Nasra State. Nasra State has, uh, was created in 1996, and before the previous government, you could easily have described the state as being a rural state, you know, uh, a rural conclave, but um, with Nasrawa State, I mean, with uh, the coming of His Excellency Jine Abdullahi A. Sule, what we're seeing is we're moving from a rural state or a rural conclave to a smart city, to the state which began to have the, the indices 
of paved roads, planned cities, you know, digital administration, land, digital land administration, and so on. You know, the trappings of a modern city. So it's at this threshold that His Excellency Engineer Abdullahi A. Suli came to find. You would say he has uh, met a fertile ground ready for the leap into industrialization. So what would have been happening and what's been happening in the last seven months is His Excellency Engineer Abdullahi A. Suli is bringing to bear his um, global business proclivities. Remember that he was the immediate past group managing director of Dangote Group. He was one time managing director of um, AP as well, African Petroleum. Uh, so he has spent over 35 years of having vast experience in the oil and gas and sugar industries, both of America and you know Nigeria here, because he spent over 20 years abroad. So with such a person who is globally sophisticated, you know, a businessman, somebody who has been the head of the entire Dangote, you know, um, empire or conglomerate as group managing director who could just sign off like 10 to 12 billion naira just with one memo to say, let me repair a ship that's on the sea. Uh, you're dealing with a person who's coming to rule, I mean, who's coming to preside over the affairs of a state where the entire budget perhaps wouldn't, you know, surpass uh, monthly what you need is about what you get from federal allocation wouldn't be more than like two billion naira. So you're looking at a person like that, bringing his global experience and his worldview. The target has simply been how does the man bring wealth and prosperity to Nasrawa state? How does he industrialize the state? How does he create employment for the citizens of Nasrawa state? And that's a marked difference between the previous administration and this administration. So while the previous administration was building structures to set up what you call a solid foundation for takeoff, now the plane is actually taking off. And taking off into what? Industrialization, you know, taking off into the employment of, um, well, I mean, the employment of youths, the generation of wealth and prosperity for the entire citizens. And basically that is the, the clear-cut difference, an emphasis on human capacity development and wealth creation using the tool and the element of the industrial economic development strategy and bringing ideas that are very, very different. So I think that's, that's um, one of the things that I have noticed. It is interesting to see the vision of improving Nasara State is transforming from an idea to reality. And that's all we can take on the program today. You can join us again next time for more interesting episodes. Until the next one, always remember, Nasara means business. <laughs>